Attentive Healthcare Solutions webinar. We're excited to share our next-gen add-on solution, ChartGuard, with you today. My name is Chelsea Grover, and I'm the Marketing Communications Coordinator for Attentive. I'd like to take a moment to explain the process for today's presentation. First, I'd like to mention that this webinar will be recorded. Next, for those of you who aren't familiar with Attentive, I want to share a bit of who we are with you. We specialize specifically in next-gen healthcare, and our goal in life is to make delighted clients by helping them get the absolute most out of their next-gen software investment. We are passionate about providing solutions for our healthcare provider partners, which in turn help them to improve patient care, enhance the patient experience, and maintain a financially healthy practice. To sum it up, we do everything next-gen. And we also have two add-on productivity solutions for next-gen, ChartGuard and Refund Manager. Next, I wanted to mention an upcoming webinar. On March 28th, we'll be presenting a new perspective on the next-gen patient portal. In it, we'll highlight specific next-gen healthcare patient excuse me, next-gen patient portal features included in the recent 5984 update and how they can benefit your practice. We'll provide an overview on the patient portal from both the patient and prov provider point of view to truly understand what the full patient portal experience is like. We hope to see you at this educational webinar. Okay, so back to ChartGuard. At the end of the presentation, we're going to open the floor up to questions from you. We'll answer all the questions at the end, but you can type them in the questions area of the webinar control panel whenever they occur to you. And finally, for audio clarity purposes, everyone's phone will remain muted throughout the entire webinar. If you experience audio issues, please use the chat box to let us know so we can resolve them. And again, questions may be entered in the questions box. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. Tom Siegel is Itentive's Business Development Manager, and Joel Schultz is Director of Product Solutions at Itentive, which means that he and his team are the people that actually built this great program. So Tom, I'm going to pass the webinar off to you. Feel free, feel free to get started when you're ready. All right, thank you very much, Chelsea. And thank you for uh, joining us to talk about ChartGuard and uh, downtime solution with regards to downtime preparedness. This is an agenda that I'm gonna go through today and we'll cover uh, these points throughout the presentation. Uh, during the presentation, you'll learn about what ChartGuard is. Uh, we'll talk about EHR dependencies. Uh, you'll learn about why practices buy ChartGuard. Um, I will, uh, Turn it over to Joel Schulz, and Joel will talk about how it works, and then we'll show you the output that's generated by ChartCard, and as uh, we'll give you a brief overview of who Itentive is, and then as Chelsea mentioned, uh, we'll answer any questions that you have at the end of the uh, presentation. So what is ChartCard? Well, ChartCard is a business continuity solution that addresses downtime preparedness. Uh, it ensures the availability of patient charts during EHR downtime. And these are, uh, these are reasons why, uh, some of the reasons why people and practices uh, purchase a product like ChartGuard, uh, because they're looking for a business continuity solution. Uh, they're looking for a way that they can prepare uh, at their office locations for a downtime situation. And they're looking for a way that, that gives them access to critical information uh, so that they can still provide the quality of care uh, to their patients that their patients expect and that they expect of uh, themselves as well. Uh, another reason uh, uh, organizations purchase a uh, product like ChartGuard is because it does address a, uh, a clause within the, uh, the HIPAA guidelines. And uh, this particular clause uh, says that, establish, that you need to establish and implement as needed policies and procedures for responding to an emergency or other occurrence that damages systems that contain electronic protected health information. And what a product like ChartGuard does is it does uh, provide the ability to uh, implement a contingency plan that, that enables you to respond to a situation when uh, you no longer have access to your uh, critical uh, health information. With regards to uh, um, our technology environment, uh, our EPM systems and our EHR systems have become uh, quite dependent on uh, complex technology. Uh, just like in our, in our personal lives, uh, with technology hitting everything that we pretty much touch, touch nowadays with regards to phones and appliances in our homes and um, doorbells and, and uh, all of those uh, new technologies that have come out, uh, our EHR systems are the same way. 
we have uh, servers, we have workstations, we have tablets, we have scanners, we have local area networks, we have T1 lines, we have VPNs, we have wireless connections, we have internet connections, we have hosting connections, we have power systems, we have cooling systems, and behind each one of these components, there's software that runs them as well. So uh, the complexity of not only the hardware, but the software that runs them all, and any one of these uh, components can have a failure. And when we have a failure in this, in this uh, arena of complex technologies that run our systems, uh, we can lose access to our, our systems. And when we lose access to our systems, what does that mean from a, an EHR standpoint? Well, that means we could have an impact that we provide. We can have an impact on, uh, on productivity where we have uh, lost productivity. We can have an impact on, on revenue where we lose revenue. There, are, there have been uh, a few studies that have been done over the years with regards to uh, the impact of uh, to our EHR systems and what that means to practices and health centers. And uh, some of those studies have shown that it can cost as much as $488 per hour per provider. So it can be quite expensive when uh, we have a dying time situation and uh, the effect that it can have on our, on our practice and health center. So when we have a downtime situation, what are options? Well, we could temporarily close the practice and the location. Uh, we could go back to paper charts, but that's becoming uh, more and more uh, difficult for us to do because we become more and more dependent on our electronic health records and, and we uh, paper charts uh, much anymore. Uh, we could go to uh, implementing fully redundant technologies where we could add uh, more servers to back up our current servers. We could add more uh, another network to back up our network. We could add another data center to back up our current data center. Uh, we could add another power system to back up our, our current power. Uh, we could add another cooling system back up our our, uh, our current cooling system. But when we're adding these additional components to build out and make our, our environment more robust and, and redundant, um, the cost can increase. Cost, uh, to hey, our Tom, systems. I think we lost your audio there for a second. Could you repeat that? Uh, so with our, our redundant technologies, we could add more servers, we could add more personal data center uh, to our current data. Uh, we could add uh, additional uh, power to back up our current power. So when we do this, our and increase exponentially uh, in order to uh, build out these redundant technologies and redundant systems. We could even uh, go to, and uh, and if we go to hosting, uh, that also has a, a risk for access environment. This uh, this next slide I'm going to show you is just some examples of failures. And it's really to remind us of the different types of things that can happen with regards to uh, our systems failing and what causes us to fail. Um, we have up there a sprinkler line fail in our computer rooms. But what we do have in this particular, uh, a, a sprinkler head had uh, the computer room and the water started to seep into the server room, and because of that, they had to shut down uh, the server room. In uh, you may remember years ago, in uh, July of 2000, United Airlines, the New York Stock Exchange, the Wall Street Journal, these Brookings Institute all had failures on the same day. Uh, network connectivity issue that caused by, by caused by a router. Uh, it caused them to United to ground hundreds of flights across the world for a couple hours. The New York Stock Exchange had a falter soft software upgrade that caused them to stop trading on the exchange for nearly four hours. Uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, had insufficient capacity for um, a uh, unanticipated demand on their website 
so it caused the uh, server connections to failure. And then the Brookings Institute went offline for about an hour due to a content publishing error. Um, if you take a look at these four organizations, they're built for 24-7, 365 days a year uptime. And if they can have a failure like this, uh, according to their organization, uh, it can affect any one of us with our systems. In, uh, in May of 2016, Time Warner and uh, Cable Cox customers in New York City, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island lost the internet connections because of fiber cuts that occurred by the level three uh, company in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. They had two uh, multiple fiber cuts in those two states and caused uh, their customers at, at Time Warner and Cox to lose access to uh, the internet. Uh, Amazon, or in, in October 2016, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Amazon, Twitter, Pandora, Reddit, Pinterest, Athena, uh, they all had downtime situations because of the uh, DDoS cyber attack that occurred. Uh, DIN is one of the largest um, uh, ISP providers in the world. Uh, so, you know, they had a cyber attack against them and uh, it caused all these other organizations that uh, used in to uh, have downtime situations. And then uh, just a few months ago, Comcast uh, internet service went down for about an hour and a half and uh, many organizations across the, uh, the country were affected, again, were affected by the outage. And uh, again, it was determined that level three had a configuration error. So, uh, the point of this slide is just to remind us of the various types of failures that can happen out there and that they are uh, failures that can happen because of things that are outside of our control. And when they're outside of our control, um, you know, we're at the, uh, basically at the mercy of these, uh, these organizations and these types of uh, attacks. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, at the $488 per hour uh, cost that could have impact our, our particular practice, uh, a 10 provider practice, uh, it, if they're down for four hours, it can cost them as much as uh, $19,520. So it is a significant uh, uh, cost that, can, uh, that we need to be aware of when we have a downtime situation. So the questions that we need to ask ourselves when we're, when we're thinking about uh, downtime and solutions uh, to uh, address a downtime situation is, do I pursue the uptime, uptime path? Do I pursue the path of, of redundancy? Do I pursue the path of uh, building up my infrastructure so that I can try to strive to reach that 100% uptime uh, by, as I mentioned earlier, you know, adding additional servers, additional network, additional power systems and cooling systems, uh, do I go down that path or do I go down a path where I pursue a solution that enables me to continue on with my business uh, until NextGen comes back online? Another question to ask is, um, is, am I going to be reactive or am I going to be proactive in my clinic, my, my practice's preparedness for, for downtime? So am I going to wait for an incident to happen to me have a downtime situation and then say, oh, I need to now address uh, getting a solution to address downtime, or am I gonna be proactive and say, you know what, this may happen, um, it's most likely to happen, and I wanna be prepared when it does happen, so I'm gonna be proactive and, and implement a solution at this time. Another question that we need to ask ourselves as we're, as we're thinking about uh, downtime solutions is, and addressing downtime preparedness is, what type of an impact uh, will a next down, next gen downtime incident have on our clinic and have on our practice? Um, the types of impacts you would uh, would would think about would be, you know, the um, the 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 revenue impact. Um, am I, you know, how much revenue may I lose if I if I uh, have a downtime situation? And how much cost am I going to have? How much profitability am I going to am I going to lose if I do that? Because my, basically my costs are going to be the same. I'm going to have the same staff on, on the same amount of staff uh, when I have a downtime situation, but I won't be bringing in revenue uh, during that time frame, or I'll bring in reduced revenue during that time frame. 
so that's going to affect my profitability. Um, what type of uh, impact is it going to have to the quality of care uh, that I provide? What type of an impact is it going to uh, have on the productivity that I have? Um, what type of impact is it going to have on patient satisfaction? Uh, what type of an impact is it going to have on the people that are in the waiting room? Um, so those are the types of impacts that sh that you uh, need to think about as you're as you're thinking about these downtime situations. Um, what's the significance of that Im significance of the impact on the clinic when I have a downtime situation uh, based on the duration of downtime? If I'm down for an hour, you know what's that impact going to be for each one of the impacts that I just had, had mentioned? What's the uh, what's the impact if I'm down for two hours? If I'm down for three hours or four hours? Um, so think about you know what that that impact is and what the significance is as well. Then the question isn't really whether your clinic's going to lose connectivity. It's really a question is how to minimize. How am I going to minimize the loss? How am I going to minimize the disruption when it does does happen? Um, so these are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself as you're thinking about um, downtime preparedness, uh, thinking about uh, a solution that uh, will address you know an impact a, ne a next gen downtime situation. So, as I mentioned earlier, you know, chart guard is an option, and, and that option is chart guard is an, an affordable business continuity solution uh, that ensures that your practice is going to be productive, profitable, profitable, and secure during EHR downtime. Uh, it does provide you the ability to have access to the complete clinical record uh, offline uh, in a file, a PDF file, so that you can continue to see your patients. Uh, with minimal disruption. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe, and Joe's going to go through and, and talk about how ChartGuard works. Great. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for our webinar this afternoon. As Tom mentioned, there's lots of reasons why people lose access to their EHR. And it all boils down to it's a complex system. And every day that it works great, it's really an aligning of the planets kind of event because of all those pieces that Tom mentioned. In creating ChartGuard many years ago, we took those factors into consideration. And what we looked for is out of all those things that fail, what's the most common one? And the most common one our practices were telling us was the network because that's the one they can't really control. You can add redundancy to the servers. You can add redundancy to your cooling systems. You can do all this stuff to add redundancy everywhere, but generally you don't control the network. The network is run by the internet providers and the phone companies and such. And that is one of the biggest causes of failure. In fact, uh, way back in a past life, I used to be a network admin for a healthcare company and we'd have maybe once a year a site would go down for some length of time whether it was you know five minutes or a couple hours and once we grew to the point where we had 52 sites well you know then statistically a site could go down every week and that was no good so we're always looking for ways to kind of get around these network outages so in designing chart guard what we looked at is well if next gen's unavailable and more commonly, if the network's unavailable, you need to have that redundant data locally at the site where the patients are. It doesn't do you any good if you can't get to the internet to have it redundant elsewhere up in the cloud. It needs to be on location. And this diagram that we're looking at now summarizes nicely how ChartGuard works. ChartGuard runs each night in your data center, whether that's hosted or locally at one of your sites, and it creates PDF files of the patient chart. So it's really taking the electronic data and creating a PDF equivalent of what you used to have on paper. Then what it does is it pushes those files out to the site where the patients are scheduled to present for their appointment. So that way, if the network cable gets cut at 9 a.m. and the patient shows up at 9.30, you have that chart out there in PDF form that's at the practice within its four walls that you don't have to go over the internet to go grab. That's 
the differentiator of ChartGuard. You have the data there, you have it locally where that's needed. Now that PDF file, and you get one of those per patient, and we'll show you these in just a little bit, that PDF file that's copied out to each location reads just like your old paper charts did. In fact, you can use it electronically as a PDF file if the network within that practice is still working. We have clients that do that. Otherwise, you can print it to paper and put it in the middle of the folder just like we were doing 10 years ago. And then you'd bring it back and the provider or the clinicians would still have all that clinical information, A, to look like they didn't know what they were doing in front of the patient, right? Because to the patient, they may have just been there two weeks ago, but appointment-wise, that might have been 150 appointments ago. So the provider may not remember. And two, just to improve the quality of care, as Tom mentioned in going through the uh, questions that you need to ask. So to be able to give quality care, you need to have that data about the patient's history and um, you know what's going on and why they're there today and so on. So ChartGuard, in summary, it's going to run alongside your next-gen database. It's going to produce these PDF files, and it's going to push them out to each location where the patients are scheduled to have appointments. Additionally, you can keep those files centralized, too. So if you want to redirect the patients to a different location, you can put them on an encrypted USB drive and you know, bring them out to a different location or push them across the network if that other location is still up and running. So you have lots of options, but the, the great thing about ChartGuard is it covers you for your outages. So if it's a database outage, if it's one of your um, terminal servers that's down, if it's PCs get infected by a virus, you have that information in PDF form, so you can still keep seeing patients, give a high quality care, keep the providers happy, all those great things. So I mentioned these charts look like the old paper charts that we used to have. So let's talk about what's inside these charts that ChartGuard is gonna produce. First, each site is gonna get an appointment listing because one of the things we talked about when creating ChartGuard is, yeah, it's great to have the chart, but it's also great to know when the appointments are scheduled to come in. So you only print the charts that you need to, okay? If you have a whole day's worth of charts out there, you may not wanna print them all just because you're uh, necessarily, but you're exposing PHI, right? So you only print them on demand, you know, as the patients present or as they're about to present based on their appointment time. Typically, that's what we see our clients doing. So we give you that appointment listing and, you know, that can be customized to include um, limited amounts of extra data about the patient and why they're there. So each location gets an appointment listing pushed out to them. Then the chart itself contains the information that you have in NextGen. So we start with the patient data sheet, which is the demographics, the guarantor, insurance information. So you have a nice summary of that. So when the patient presents at the front desk, you, you know who they are and what their insurance is. We pull the module data from NextGen and we give you that in nice, easy to read grids. So you can look at you know, their current allergies, medications, labs. So the providers, the clinicians have all those available to them. And then we pull your next-gen documents, and those are really the snapshots of your templates from EHR, from past visits. So that information gets pulled into the chart too. So you end up with a pretty complete medical history of the patient. Now, what we get asked from clients is, well, what if the patient's been seeing us for 10 years and we've been on next-gen that long? Are we gonna get you know, a paper chart that's like 500 pages? Well, no, you don't have to. One of the things we'll do during the install is set what we call the depth of the information that you want, how many months back or how many items back, uh, which types of documents you want, which types of things from ICS do you want. So we build what you need for that downtime situation into the chart so that you're not ending up with reams and reams of uh, data that the provider has to thumb through. All right, so Tom, I'll turn it back over to you. Tom's gonna take us on a quick tour of the appointment book and then show us what these PDFs look like. And you know, again, the great thing about them is that they're human readable, they can be used electronically or put to paper. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. So this is a look at what the appointment listing looks like. So here you have the location, 
you have the provider, the date of the appointment, the time of the appointment, uh, the patient, and, uh, and what the patient's coming in for. So this is the appointment listing, as Joe mentioned, that each location would have for their particular location um, so that they can uh, uh, tell who's, who's coming in and what they're coming in for. Uh, now I'm going to show you what the patient chart looks like. And uh, this is what the patient chart looks like in, in PDF format. So as Joe had mentioned, uh, it is the first part is the demographic information. So you can see their, their name, address, uh, phone number, their uh, employer, the insurances that they have. So all the demographic information is there. And then as you can scroll down, you can go to the next section which shows um, the, uh, the allergies. And this is what it shows in, in table format. Uh, then you can scroll down to the next section and uh, take a look at the active medications, again, in table format. So you can scroll from top to bottom. Here's the look at what the labs look like. You can, you can scroll from top to bottom uh, to see what the information is. But we also have bookmarked it as well. So if you come over here on the left side and click on the bookmark, you'll see all the sections that we have in the uh, in the chart. And uh, you can then quickly go to the section and uh, click on the section, it'll bring you right there. So if you just wanted to see what the chronic conditions were, uh, you could click on that and it'll bring you right to that section in the PDF. If you wanted to see what their immunizations were, you could uh, go click on immunizations and go directly directly there. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can scroll up and scroll down uh, based on how you what information you want to uh, to see. As uh, Joe mentioned, uh, you can also uh, you know we include the documents. Uh, so any documents that are generated uh, would be included. And as Joe mentioned, the depth uh, can, can be trolled by, the amount of uh, time or the number of documents. So if you wanted to see the last three documents, you could see the last three. If you wanted to see, give me all the documents in the past six months, uh, you would see all the documents in the past six months. Uh, we also include ICS images. Uh, so you can see all of the images um, that are out there. Again, um, controlled by the number, the most recent number of ICS images. So if you wanted to see, you know, give me the last three images or give me all the images in the past uh, nine months. So this is the, the type of information that is out there uh, that can be generated in the PDF file. Um, and uh, again, you can control the content of this as uh, when we configure it with you, you know, what information do you want to see in the file and what is the depth of the information that you want to see in the file. We can also include account summary in the file and what this is uh, helpful for is if uh, if the front desk is talking to the patient as they're coming in and they may have a balance on their account they can still uh, work with them to collect the info uh, collect the payment on the on the balance if they wanted to. So this is what this is what the uh, the charts look like. And uh, as as um, Joe mentioned, uh, you can generate the the charts for uh, a number of days looking forward. So you could generate charts for just tomorrow, or you could generate uh, charts for the appointments on. Uh, on uh, Friday and Saturday, if you have Saturday appointments, or Friday, Saturday, Monday. Uh, so you can look forward how many days you want to generate. Now what happens is ChartGuard cleans up for itself afterwards as well, meaning that um, it only, it doesn't, the file doesn't build out and build out and build out. It, it builds it, then erases that information and stores new information uh, out there. Uh, the appointment listing that I showed to you can also be customized to meet your front office needs. So um, if you wanted to have maybe the phone number of the patient on the list, just in case you may need to call uh, that particular patient, uh, that can be on the, uh, the appointment listing as well. 
This is uh, just a, a testimony from, uh, we had received an email from one of our clients. Uh, this particular client had purchased uh, ChartGuard um, a couple, about a year and a half ago, two years ago uh, in um, July timeframe. And that following December, they had an outage uh, in their in the network. So he, uh, he took a few minutes to send us a, an email to let us know how ChartGuard had uh, worked for them. So they had uh, an outage that had, had uh, affected their two biggest clinics uh, in December, and uh, they were able to um, use the chart card generated information to continue to see their patients without having to turn away their patients or to close any clinics. And uh, the providers and staff were, were quite pleased with uh, the backup plan of having chart card implemented. There are... Uh, uh, a few versions of ChartGuard that we have uh, created over the uh, the past uh, few years. And we have the ChartGuard version that we just talked about today. Uh, we have a ChartGuard on-demand version that allows uh, you to create a patient chart on request. Basically, you know, if a patient comes in to your office and says, I would like to have a copy of my chart, um, you can um, submit the request to ChartGuard on-demand and it will print out uh, that particular chart for that individual. It's also useful, useful for audit requests if you have uh, maybe an uh, insurance audit uh, coming in and, and they want to take a look at uh, your history. Um, you can uh, generate a, a list of uh, charts uh, based on a, a, a date range or a group of uh, patients. And then uh, ChartGuard iCarver is another derivative of ChartGuard, and that's used for long-term storage of, of charts. A little bit about uh, iTentive and who we are. Uh, we were founded in 2003. Uh, our mission is to create additional value for next-gen investment. And as uh, Chelsea had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, our passion is to work with our clients to improve patient care, to work with our clients to enhance the patient experience, to work with our clients to maintain a financially healthy practice. We have uh, 19 years of experience with uh, NextGen. We have 70 some employees in the company, most of which are consultants that travel from uh, practice to practice, from health center to health center, working with uh, the individual practices and health centers to get as much value out of that uh, NextGen investment uh, through improving business process, improving workflow process, uh, improving the reporting features, uh, reporting information that comes out of NextGen so that you can use that to make better decisions with regards to the, the practice. And um, if you take the 2003 and the 19 years, they do not add up. And the reason for that is iTentive started out as a IT organization for IT department for a healthcare organization. And uh, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, when the business mantra back then was focus on what you do best and outsource the rest, the uh, medical organization was going to outs outsource the IT group and the leaders of the IT group said, well, if you want to do that, what we'd like to do is form our own company and provide services back to you. So they agreed to do that. And uh, from that point forward, we have worked with over 350, 400 clients that use NextGen and we've become a strategic partner, strategic partner with NextGen uh, in that time frame as well. We have uh, five service lines that we uh, generate our revenue through. And uh, through these five service lines, uh, we provide these types of solutions, uh, any one of these point solutions, or any one of these solutions in combination with another uh, to provide a, a packaged integrated solution. So we do implementations of NextGen, we do process improvements, workflow improvements, as I mentioned, uh, we have a group of developers that can develop uh, enhancements to the templates. Uh, we can provide upgrades to NextGen as well as support for NextGen. Uh, we have a group of technology folks that can provide IT managed services, meaning that we can manage your, um, your desktops, your laptops, your uh, network uh, infrastructure, uh, so we can manage that for you. Um, we also have our own data center, so we can uh, host uh, clients in our in our data center. Uh, and then we have a group of developers that uh, develop productivity tools as well, which is ChartGuard's a productivity tool that we just talked about. 
And then another productivity tool that we have is Refund Manager that uh, streamlines and automates the credit balance handling and workflow uh, uh, processing, credit uh, refund check processing uh, within uh, the organization. We also developed the uh, interf uh, clinical interface for Freesia. Freesia is the uh, tablet that you can use in your uh, check-in process uh, within, uh, within the practice. And uh, we developed the interface that enables uh, the patient to uh, update their, their clinical information uh, from that tablet. And then we worked with uh, an organization, uh, Doctors Link, to integrate NextGen to Transworld uh, to be able to uh, pass files between the two in order to lower the cost of, of collections. So just a few of the uh, productivity tools that we have developed over the years as well. This time we'll, uh, we'll take any questions. If you have any questions, as uh, we talked about, enter them in the, uh, in the question box and then we can uh, answer them. Great, thank you, Tom, and thanks, Joe. And uh, again, questions may be entered in the questions box. It looks like at the moment we only have two, so feel free to ask them if you have them, and I'm sure we'll be able to get to them. First question, um, can you confirm that ChartGuard data is available even when our Comcast system goes out? All right, this is Joe, I'll go ahead and take that one. Uh, definitely, that is really what ChartGuard is known for. It's not just giving you the data somewhere on the internet, it's putting the data in the locations where you're gonna need it. So those PDFs get copied out and we can do several days worth of PDFs at a time. So we'll look forward in the schedule and you know pick either you know three days, five days, whatever you deem appropriate. Cause sometimes those network outages can last overnight or if it's weather related, they can last several nights. Great, thank you, Joe. Next question. Can we use ChartGuard for giving a provider their patient's data when they leave our group? Definitely, we have clients that do that today. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is to look at our ChartGuard on-demand product where you can pick populations of people, whether it's one or people with a particular insurance company, those types of things to produce charts for. Otherwise, if it's just something you're kind of doing is a one-off every now and then, you could schedule an appointment uh, is, you know, against kind of a dummy resource, and then the next day you'd have a chart form. Perfect. Well, it looks like that might be all the questions we have, but if you think of questions after the, the webinar is done, you see both Tom and Joe's information up on the screen. Feel free to reach out to them. Uh, I'll be reaching out to you with a copy of the recording uh, if you want to review it later. So you can also reply back to that email and I'll make sure that your questions get answered as well. Basically, any way that you can get to get a hold of us, we are happy to answer your questions. So just let us know. And again, thank you for joining us today and I hope that you have a great rest of the day and rest of the week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.